Hey guys, um, this is the final reveal. Uh, I know it's been a while since I last did a video on it, on an update on the Leopard, but I've been so busy with work and life, uh, etc. Um, I just haven't had the time to basically do another update. So I thought, what the hell, I'll just go through and finish it at the end and just do the final reveal for you. So here she is, as you can see, she's complete. And... It's come up an immensely good little kit. Um, I'm very happy with the actual weathering on it. Um, I used one of MIG's products again. Uh, in fact, it wasn't actually, it was a mixture of MIG and AK's um, products I actually used on this to make it look a little bit more weathered up, as you can see here. I'm sorry I haven't got the turntable on, but unfortunately I couldn't find the battery for it. So I'm having to use the ordinary Tamiya turntable. Um, but I have to say, I'm very, very happy the way this kit has actually turned out. I know it's taken me a heck of a time to get to this stage. Uh, but as I say, with life and everything, I just haven't had any quality time on the bench. And obviously, with the prospect of moving, it's trying to fit it in. And I was determined to get this project at least finished and ready for you guys before I move. So um, when I'm moving, I don't know. It's still all up in the air at the moment. So we shall see. Um... And this could be the last video that I do for a while, um, dependent on life, etc. Um, I am thinking of starting another project, but if I do, um, I don't know if I'm going to be doing any videos on it. Um, I'll possibly just put posts on my Facebook page, uh, which you can actually find. Um, so uh, there you go. But as I say... Um, I was thinking of finishing it tomorrow, but I thought, well, I've got so much in hand here. I just basically carried on and thought, bugger it, I'll get the damn thing done to get it today, get the post done, and then get the video done. And then that's it. This project is complete. Um, and it's the second project I managed to complete in a year uh, the, for 2019. Um, I would have done a lot more, probably would have got this finished a lot earlier. As I say, what with life, etc. I just haven't had any much quality time on the bench. Uh, but I was determined to get this project at least finished and just solely work on this. Um, as you can see, the main tracks have worked out absolutely stupendously. Uh, although I did have fun and games with them. Um, although I got them assembled and they were beautifully assembled. Um... I got them primed up with UMP Black Primer, that went down well, and in the first set of tracks, well, as soon as I put the pigments down, they just fell apart. So, I just don't know what it was, whether it was where I put too many pigments and it just ate at the plastic, I don't know. Uh, but it just all fell to pieces, so I had to go do and sue two more sets, which has been another delay, and while I've got this, <laughs> this late and getting a final reveal done. Uh, but they do come up well. They are a little bit delicate, um, so bear in mind if you put any pigments on them, be careful. Um, I found the best solution was basically, rather than do it with the tracks off, get the tracks primed, fit them onto the actual kit, and then do the pigments afterwards, and they've come up really well. Um, um, what else was I going to mention? Um, trying to think now. The final sort of weathering process as regards the mud effects on this uh, was used using, hang on there if I can get the little thing here, is this, AK wet mud um, for dioramas and splatter effects. Because obviously with these big beasties it's kicking up a lot of muck and dirt etc. And I've actually re-enhanced this on the actual wheels as you can see along here. Um... She's giving it splattered, sort of thick, muddy effects, and along the side skirts, which you can see here. Um, but uh, yeah, and then obviously, I've also put some uh, micro crystal clear on the viewing ports here for the driver because you don't actually get any glass or anything in the kit. Um, so yeah, that was easy just using a cocktail stick and then obviously wiping the excess off. So um, yeah, that dried out beautifully. I touched up the wing mirrors because unfortunately I've got pigments on there and in one instance I actually knocked one off and had to repair this one and glue it back with a bit of uh, super glue. 
Um, again, with the aerials, I knocked them off copious amounts of times and then just had to glue them back on and touch them up. Um, I did get some glue runs along here when I were adding the side skirts. So basically, I just went over them with a bit of Tamiya or they've drab just to touch them up really and tidy it up. And then on the exhaust stacks, um, I just went over them again just to give it that sooty burnt effect as you would see on the real vehicle. And then just basically put some clear over the back headlights and the reflectors here. Um, because obviously once I put the cluster, when I put the Galeria matte varnish down on it, it just basically matted them down as well. So I just went over them with a bit of Humber on clear, believe it or not. Um, so yeah, it's a stupendous little kit. I mean, okay, it's dated. It was the first one that came out 40 odd years ago. And compared to the Meng and Tacom kits, it's a, it's a bit crude, but it still stands up well, uh, I have to say. I mean, the build itself, it just fell together, like, to me, his new normal standard. Um, the only thing I found was this barrel, once you actually get the actual hood cover on the mantlet, it sits at a very sloped angle and you can't move it. So that's the one fault I did find on this kit. Other than that, it just went together simply, um, apart from the normal supply tracks, which were so tight. Um, the front eyed the wheel, because obviously either wheels are at the front of this vehicle and the sprockets at the rear, um, snapped off. Um, so hence why I got the main tracks in, and these are the ones I'd honestly recommend. But as I say, be very careful with them, because they are a little bit delicate. They do snap in easily um once you get into a rhythm and um it took me the best part what two three hours to get both sets assembled uh but they are very delicate um and as i said you're probably better priming them and then putting them on the vehicle and then putting pigments and adding weathering effects afterwards and that way you're not going to have any detrimental effects but bear in mind don't put too many pigments on them because it'll eat at the plastic and they just fall apart um figure's a bit crude i must admit i was a bit disappointed with that although it's not come up too bad um just used the ordinary tamiya paints on it um used a bit of putty just to fill in the arm uh, sockets etc although it's shrunk a bit and it's come up a bit again um and then obviously i matted it down with galeria and put in some uh, dark dirt wash and then just highlighted it here or there with a little bit of like olive green and then that was him done um, the optics again I went over again with um, some clear to me a blue and then obviously went over it again with some uh, Humbro clear just to enhance the glass optics on it um, and the looks like the vision port on there for the gun which is this thing here um just to give it a bit of added detail um once the construction on this kit was done it was just a tiny bit of filling here and there nothing really major and then i just went down with um black primer uh, which is ump black primer uh or badge osana as, as it's really known um, and then went down with uh, the base coat of um, olive drab and then added a little bit of white and highlighted it a bit here and there just to give it a little bit of tonal variation. Um, and then the next process obviously was just to clear coat everything um, ready for deckling and that didn't take long and they bedded down beautifully with a bit of micro crystal, a bit of uh, micro solar micro set so there wasn't any problem there. And I didn't get any carrier film as you do on Tamiya decals sometimes. So they bedded down beautifully. And then basically went over to another clear coat. And then added the weathering effects. And that was added using um, dark dirt, flurry dark dirt wash again. Um, and then after that, I just went over one of the panel lines with the panel line, um, uh, Tamiya panel line. Um, that stuff hang on got it in the drawer here sorry about this i'm sort of fumbling on my words again um 
and prepared as always not. <laughs> well, where did I put that? Well, it's normal. T ah, here we go. This is the stuff. Although I use the black panel lime wash, um, it's basically an enamel. Um, so that went down on some of the marker lines, and I did the same with the figure as well, just to enhance the detail, make it pop. And then obviously it was a case of uh, whether it would rain streaks. So basically what I used for that, although you, I think you can basically see it on the ton front of the glacis here. Um, what I used for that is AK streaking grime. And using a bit of turpenoid, um, I basically put that on first. And then after I've done that, I went to mix streaking effects rain mark effects because sometimes you get a certain amount of streaking on it just to give it that weathered slight weathered look on the turret and the side skirts although you can't see it with the mud splatter now and on some parts of the hull um as well uh as well as the back of the turret here um which really came up well uh, so i was pleased with that and then after that i just gave it an overall um coat of galeria matte varnish which is this stuff here which i can heartily recommend um and this is going to last me ages to be honest with you. you can get it in any art shop uh admittedly online it's quite expensive it can be up to around about 20 pounds but i mean i got this one a good deal at a local diy store because they had it on offer at the time so I snapped that up and I have to say that's the best matte varnish I've ever, ever used and I'm fully converted to it. Although there are similarly good products on there, but as you can see, it looks really good. Um, so once that was done, it was on to um, basically the weathering. Um, first off, as I say, with the tracks, I basically built them up. Um, and then once that was done, I just basically primed them. And uh, first time I weathered them up, I uh, just fell to pieces, as is this from the original set. <sighs> yes, that peeved me off a bit. But anyway, apart from that, before I did that, I basically put on some MIG pigments, um, which is this one here, which is your dark dirt mud. And if anybody wants to know what that one is, it's PO33. Okay, um, so I put that on over the wheels and the tracks, and at the back here, as you can see, um, just give it that really muddy effect as though it's going through muddy terrain as it is on this trackway here. Um, because I wanted to give it the impression it was out on open exercises as it were, and I actually got this source from a book, um, which I think I referred to before, and I put it stowed away. It was on Dutch leopards. So I managed to get some sources from that, really. Uh, I just wanted to make it look as though it was on exercise, as it were, uh, out in the German forest or whatever. Um, but anyway, I'm detracting from what I'm saying. Um, once that was done, I used, obviously... <coughs> Aptalung's pigment fixer, which I heartily recommend. Um, and then the final weathering process, as was done today, was basically to put on the mud splatter on the side skirts and the back of the vehicle and on some of the tracks as well, uh, which you can see. Um, and it was this uh, AK wet mud effects now basically all you tend to use you can use it through an airbrush as you can see here by your brush just give it that authentic splatter effect which i was intending to do originally because i've got the spray roof all set up and then i ended up not using it <laughs> because all i did was get an old toothbrush um i put a little bit in a mixing cup and thinned it down with some ump clean um thinners because you can use any acrylic thinner or water with this product to thin it down if you should so wish because it comes out quite gloopy actually in its own form um and then just basically used 
Let me find the damn thing. And I've hidden it again and can't find it. Oh, here it is at the back here, sorry. Just used an old toothbrush, loaded it up with that and just went along the side of the vehicle, flicked it like so. And hence you get the mud splatter on the side there, as you can see. Uh, I don't know if you can see it quite clearly in this light, but hey. Um, it's come up well. I mean, you'll see it more on the stills that I'll post on my page. So there you go. Um, and that was that, basically. And it was just a few touch-ups here and there on the wing mirrors. And then obviously on the optics and the both sets of headlights. And that was the tank done today. The base itself was a base I actually got from... Um, a stall at Telford around about two years ago when I last went. Um, I'd had it stowed away for ages and then basically thought, yep, yeah, I know what I'll do. I'll do it on a little vignette, as it were. Um, overlaid it with some das clay. Um, let that dry over about two to three days. And obviously, whilst it was a little bit wet, I went down with the old spare track from the kit to give this sort of marks of where all the track marks were you know um let that dry out primed it and then went over with this which is again from mig and they do loads of groundwork stuff and i just did, gave it two or three coats and as you can see here it looks like the real deal and then over went it with a little bit of um water effects i think from uh, woodland scenics just give it a little bit more of a wet glistening effect as it were for the mud and then obviously what was left was just put this either demarcation sides where the road it was ending uh for the grass verges and i've just basically used some little tufts from um a well-known german company which i've managed to source online um where are they oh here we go these are the ones i actually got and they're from a company called Serious Play. And you can actually find them on their own website, www.serious-play.co.uk. Um, they do summer, winter, autumn, you name it, they do it. Um, so put them on the side and they self, uh, self sealing because you've got sticky marks on there, so that seals. And that was that, really. And um, as you can see, the final result looks absolutely convincing. Um, I'm really pleased with the way it came out. Um, I think it's quite suitable because, as I say, I've seen the real deal at um, Tank Fest at the Bobbington Tank Museum, and there was two or three of them going around, and the power in them, bloody hell, they're absolutely awesome beasts. And um, you can feel it going through your chest, I'll tell you. Um, they are an immense awesome looking beast when you actually see them uh, moving around the actual stadium um, and that's what really sort of spurred me on to build this uh, kit really so there you go um i hope you like what you see um as i say it's um if you don't want to spend a fortune on tack on meng or anything like that i'd heartily recommend you get this kit it is old but it still stands up well um the only thing i did forget to put didn't bother with doing was putting on the spare track cables which i mentioned in an earlier update uh because to be honest with you the photo i actually sourced this from it didn't actually look as though it had them on there anyway so there you go and this was an earlier model of the 1a4 so there you go anyway that's the end of this final reveal um as I say, I hope you like the final results. I'm fairly happy with it. Um, I'm not quite decided what my next project is going to be. I was going to get back on the V1 Dio, uh, but uh, I can't get back on that immediately because unfortunately I need a couple of tubs of um, body filler just to smooth the surfaces over the uh, banks either side of the launch trail. And I ain't going to be able to order them until the end of the month. So uh, there you go. And then, as I say, I don't know how long I've got here now. Um, because fairly soon I'm going to have to look, start looking for new accommodation. Uh, so whether they'll allow me to do any modelling there or not, I don't know. Uh, so I'm not quite sure when I'm going to be back on doing videos. Uh, but at the moment, this is the final one for a while. Um, it's my final project here that's going to be completed at this stage, I think. 
Um, so there you go. Now this little puppy is going to be sitting on the shelf along with all the other builds. Anyway, that's it for now, guys. Take care. Keep up the great work out there. And as always, get kit crazy. Happy modelling. And um, I hope to return soon. So take care and bye for now.